Hi guys, it's Ashley. Thank you for joining into my channel. This is my dam Demma, Emma Lesson, Sarah. And today we're going to be doing the YouTube challenge week and week one. And well, the first challenge challenge is uh, how did you find your path? And I figured it'd be cool to incorporate my Dama's story because she was my teacher and she taught me everything that I knew about being pagan, so why not? So. That's my cue. That's your cue. Okay. What's your story? Okay, well, let's see. Where my story probably, st it, well, when I was probably around in the fifth grade, I, uh, I read a book and it was a child's book and it was um, it was <laughs> a fictional story about a little girl who thought she was a witch and I really loved the book I just completely related to the book I don't remember the name of it now because I'm old <laughs> I don't even remember the name that's kind of sad but um, I just remember from there I sort of ran with it and I made my own little talisman and I do my own little spells and, and I noticed that a lot of it actually worked and it was really kind of amazing and a lot of it came very natural to me. It felt very natural and you know being the fact that I was an adopted child I always kind of had that where do I fit in feeling mm -hmm. all the time anyway and that was my fit you know. I really felt that. And then as I got older, my friends and family, of course, they would looked really down on me being, you know, from a Christian family, Methodist. And uh, they really like, what are you doing? No, that, that's not right. You don't do that. And so then I started doing it in secret because I, you know, I didn't want to be shunned by everybody. And uh, eventually I just sort of grew away from it because... I felt like it was something wrong or dirtyish, you know, something that like unacceptably socially that would get me in trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, some of my friends thought it was really cool at first, and then they started acting like, you know, ooh, look, the freak, you know. And I was always a very empathic child. I was around seven when I uh, first realized that if someone close to me had an owie, I had an owie too. And I always thought that was a little weird. And of course, there wasn't anybody to explain that to me. And nobody else in my family was like that. So, you know, I got interested in horses and boys and all that crazy crap. And 70s drug culture and <laughs> the hippie Jack. stuff and everything. Jack. And um, so that took me away from it. I kind of forgot about it. And then... Before I knew it, I was struggling, you know, to raise children and deal with family and dysfunctional family and um, career and all that. So I just stopped thinking about it, basically, even though being an empath always impacted me in some way, shape, or form all the time. Mm -hmm. But I just really had nobody, and this is Stuart Eugene, by the way, Stuart Eugene. Thank you, bud. My very best friend. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, I was in fully involved in my career. I was divorced. I was raising Ashley, um, you know, for at least part of the time, helping her mother, who was a single mom, you know. Teen mom. Teen mom, yeah, trying to raise a child. So I was very involved in raising her and taking care of her. And... Um, and I started teaching some of the craft to her. Mostly, I think we started with like meditations and yeah, the, we started the with little fireplace and spells. banishment. Yeah, banishment because she would do this uh, banishment ritual kind of thing, good enough for a child to understand. And it was uh, we would write down all the things that we didn't want in our lives or for that year. Or to be a part of you anytime and jealousy, anger, sadness, blah blah blah. And we burn it in the call in this little baby cauldron and then we go and dump it off of our property. Because you don't want that shit on your property. Right, yeah. Well that yeah, that's where we kinda I kinda started with you and she used to be a Jehovah's Witness. 
What? Let's just say I experimented with a lot of things along the way. I was always a searcher. I was always searching, yeah. you know. For some and that's the thing of... that I did also when I was a teenager. Like I studied different religions. I went to different churches. So I had different religion friends, very Christian or very, very Catholic. And I thought it was great learning about all that stuff. But to some others, I was intruding. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's like, oh, it's the pagan savage. She's she's, she's, she's a devil worshiper. She's a, she's the devil. Yeah. And that was that was the hardest part growing up because I've always been true to who I am. I haven't. I mean, I was raised in this. I myself too grew up very. Was born very empathic. And uh, it just progressively gets stronger and stronger as you get older and at the time when all of the bullshit of everyone pointing the finger at the witch it felt really bad <laughs> that's when it wasn't so fun yeah there's always that fear of being um ostracized socially but hunted like yeah hunted yeah that's a good word and i it. i was hunted. witch hunters still exist in some form you know like I was bullied relentlessly for it, and at the beginning, I it hurt me really badly. Like I didn't know how to really handle it. It would make me really upset. But by the time I was a senior in high school, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I'm a witch bitch. I wish I could turn you into a toad, and I wish I could fly away on a damn broom, but I can't. So. If you actually knew more about it, you, you you wouldn't be such an asshole. There's actually some better things that we can do besides, you know, toads and broomsticks, you know. Yeah. It's actually much more empowering than the things that you see on TV. And that used to always frustrate us, like if we watched Charmed oh, or yeah. any of those other shows that are... It'd make us look stupid. Show like, Hollywood witches. Yeah. It's like, no, we, we don't do that. Yeah, it just makes you look shit. dumb. Because people will be like, what are you trying to be, Charn? I'm like, uh, no, actually, I'm trying to be my own person, thank you. Yeah, and we get that a lot anyway, being that our symbol is the triquatra, so. Yeah, because it's my mom, grandma, and I, and we're like three. That's what's on our BLS. Yeah. And, yeah, it was always just people making fun of me, trying to say, like, oh, well, you're just doing this for attention, or, oh, you're just fucking crazy. I'm like, I'm not crazy. Like, I'm really people, natural. People have trouble uh, discerning power from crazy. Yeah. And when people are powerful, other people discern that as crazy because they're afraid. Yeah. And, and I found that a lot when in dealing, you know, just growing old and everything to deal with people that uh, power, when you have personal power, it scares other people and makes them very nervous. Yeah, because the fear of the unknown, it, it scares everybody. It, it, well, they don't have a path or a um, a vehicle to say, per se, to get to that kind of power. They don't know how to do it. Yeah. And that is very frightening to people. And, and, and they're envious in a lot of ways. A lot of it is to do with envy, not just fear. Because... They wonder how you have that presence about you and how you got that. And mm -hmm. they have no clue as to how to get that. And I'm saying they because it's like, and it sounds like, you know, you're dividing people up. But, you know, there's the people who understand the craft and, and use it to their advantage. And then there's, you know, the rest. And I'm saying rest in a certain way because... I really think spirituality is like a, a, your fingerprint. It's individual. It's uniquely your own. Yeah. And so like I don't look at Christians or Muslims or Baptists or Jehovah's Witnesses or anybody else in a negative light because if it works for them and if it keeps their life in a moving in a positive direction, good then why them. should I judge that? Why should anyone if it judge that? If it works for you, good for you. But that doesn't mean that you need to preach to me of how what I'm doing is wrong. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to work for me. You don't want to have else. a double standard. Be like, oh well, you're you're Christian, right? 
or oh you're you're pagan like but we all know that individual when you, spirituality is uniquely your own and when you say pagan it someone's eyebrow goes up you know because well for me you, someone's eyebrow will go up yeah <laughs> yeah see she she has more of a wiccan foundation and i was raised more wiccan but around the 2000s no not 2000s like 2010 2009 when i was in high school being wiccan was like the cool thing to do like people that actually knew nothing of the craft and claimed that they were pagan and it really turned me off but you know i when they'd come up because they'd come up to me and ask me about it and i had no problem telling people about the craft but they'd also turn around and talk shit about me afterwards yeah but it's like you you're claiming to be something that i know and yeah. you're not right like if you're gonna and that happens to everybody on every level too. oh yeah for instance i ended up i got brought before my supervisor because somebody had told uh had told her that i put a spell on her oh no i cursed her i put a curse on her which i would never do to and this anyone is like but... older generation like yeah. adults yeah i mean 40 year old adults where does that, that even belong young. in the workplace you know no. i mean it was that was the beginning of the end of my career really I, it, and you know i'm okay with that i don't yeah i don't really care anymore i cared at the time but i don't care now and um you know, but, I kind of like where I am in life. Yeah. Like, the people, back to the whole Wiccan thing, I didn't, it's complicated. It's hard to explain. Like, it turned me off, but at the same time, I I can't really explain it. I dug myself in the hole, damn it. But Because we don't really utilize all the different gods yeah, and goddess see, personas. Well, you don't. I, I, I don't. I do. I'm more eclectic. Mm -hmm. You're more... I u utilize them, but for me, I view them as like personalities of the mother and the father. Yeah. They are yeah, personalities agree. that you can call upon to reach the outcome that you're looking for if you're doing a ritual or you're doing spell work or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I can only relate to like a mother and a father and the all the different lists and lists of gods and goddesses are aspects of the person of their personality mm -hmm. that's where i'm comfortable yeah because that's your version of your spirituality and yeah. just like how everyone else has their own different version but i'm more eclectic i you know egyptian uh greek native american i am all that fun stuff like yeah, it's completely a completely related Buddhist. to shamanism native american yeah. shaman that's i oh, we really missed the boat when we didn't allow that culture to meld with ours if you ask me yeah because that would have been very powerful group of people that lived life like that mm -hmm. i think in my personal opinion yeah but yeah and it just there's just so much Buddhism, Juda Judaism, did I say that right? Judaism. Um, Judaism, yeah. yeah. Like, I take little bits of everything and apply it to what I have. Because I, I follow it all. I mean, it all comes from the same place. Paganism is one of the oldest practicings yeah. in history. And like, everything... It's goddess built. worship goes back to the cavemen yeah and it's just so been it built off the of, oldest and a lot of people don't like like it when other people say this but most organized religion came from paganism yeah they changed it to what they wanted it to be to incorporate it into their newfound religious beliefs but they actually took the old rituals and everything and you know especially christianity and catholicism you know, catholicism those are all of our high holidays and minor holidays is 
the yeah, Christian Christmas, calendar. Halloween. Yeah. Uh, Not so much Halloween, but. Well, yeah, um, but Easter, Halloween, especially Christmas and Easter. Easter. Um, oh, you'd have to really. I yeah, one time I really knew all this because when I was a Jehovah's Witness, they really pounded that into you that paganism is evil and that you know all the holidays come from at least they recognize that the holidays are pagan and they they are a pagan origin and that's where they came from yeah so i will give them that knock 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 congratulations <laughs> congratulations you got one right <laughs> but yeah it there's yeah. been a lot of growth i mean You've grown a lot since you became openly pagan. Oh, I think it opened me up to another whole world of comfort and who in myself. It took a while. I mean, I was scared for people to find out. It made me nervous because I, you know, who wants to be, have your, your fingers pointed at you and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, you know, I started getting involved with meditation circles and stuff, and I found that just to be so amazing and powerful. And it, it, once the group, got comfortable with each other after about a month or so our meditations literally Link. linked together yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was amazing very powerful very enlightening so yeah i became like a much more grounded full rounded open-minded person mm -hmm. when it, when i went back to the my pagan roots that i felt naturally as a child and i should have you know, always clung to that, but you know, life happens and shit happens, and uh, lots of shit happens in life, <laughs> big time. So you know, I mean, we had a really up and down life. It was not a yeah. piece of cake or anything like that. Like from the time when I was in grade school up until even after I graduated high school and everything. Even when I moved all the way across the country to California, I still got picked on for being pagan because it it's not easy to hide. I can't hide it. I am what I am. I, I mean, even as a kid, people would come over and they, you know, you walk into our house and you know that bitch. Yeah, there's here. a green man. Yeah. With eyes that follow you in the house. In She's the got an eagle in the corner. There's creatures hanging all over the wall. Like Not live creatures or dead creatures, ones. Creatures. Just statues and pictures. Yeah. yeah. And like it's something I can't hide. I don't want to hide. It's who I am. And yeah, even at 20 years old, I still get shit for being pagan. But I do too, and I'm 59 years yeah, old. Yeah, so it's... We just had somebody in our house the other day that looked at... I don't know how they got in our back room, but they got in our back room, which is sacred space, and, you know, you just don't let anybody in there. But sometimes it happens, and that's where our library is. It's a very diverse library, but it has a whole lot of books on the craft in there. And Cult philosophy. Yeah, and all the, the magas, all those, you know, really Akashic common records, books. records, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they were wide-eyed looking at the titles on the books. and Very, very Catholic, too. Yeah, and we're already thinking, uh-oh. like, oh, fuck. Yeah, this may not go very well. And, you know, you never know. You know, you have to give everybody a chance. Give them a chance to... See, if someone generally comes up to me and asks about it, I generally, genuinely explain oh, it to them. Yeah. Like, if you really want to know, you then I will really tell you. And you take it as whatever you want it to be. You know, when people are really sincere, they really want to know. Yeah. They're, they want to learn something and they want to know what your take on something is. It doesn't mean that they believe in it or that they agree with it, and that's fine. And they still personally may look down upon it, but... And they also may personally grow in some way just because they listened to it and thought, hmm, well, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Maybe it's not for me. It's like people who believe in ghosts and people don't. Yeah. You know, if you've never had an experience with a supernatural, you know, event in your life, if you've never had that, you're going to be very skeptic, and it's you're going to think, well, that's bunky bowl, you know, but, and then other, you, other people have had 
uh, an experience, they can explain it away. And so you have that knowing that, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. But those things just connect you more to your higher self and help you um, be open to the possibilities because there's so many unexplained things. And that's kind mm -hmm. of what being in the craft is, a, is about, is you're open to... yeah. And all meeting, the experiences that life has to offer. Meeting other people that are involved in the craft, it's refreshing. Oh, yeah. It's so refreshing. It is. It's like somebody blew fresh air on you or something like, because uh, you just don't come across, especially, I think, in the area we live in. Yeah, you we just live don't in a come very, across a lot of people. religious area. We're part of, aren't we? Yeah, it's very Catholic here yeah, in very Geauga Catholic. County. I don't know if I should say that, but I said it. What did you say? Okay. Well, anyway, very yes, it's very Catholic-based here. Yeah. Um, Which I find kind of funny because of all the Christian practices, Catholicism adopted our rituals, the burning of incense, the cleansing, the mm -hmm. statues. They worship Mary, which is a form of the goddess. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Catholicism is the more Closer. pagan of all of them, yeah. but yet it happens to be some of the most judgmental. So I don't, I don't know where that all falls, but anyway, it all, I, it all is interesting. And in our library, we have, you okay. know, books on the Quran and uh, Jesus and history, the history, yeah, back then, New Eastern, Testament, Western. Old Testament. Yeah, Eastern Western philosophy, you know, I think it's good to look into everything and try to find yeah. the positive aspects in all of it because then you, you find ways, you know, to relate to people. Yeah, and every, I personally think that in every religion there's a lot of beautiful writings and a lot of beautiful teachings in every religion. I poke a fire. <laughs> The hairy one. <laughs> the hairy fat one. <laughs> but, and that's when you, like, if you, if that's something that you really admire and really like of that religion, you take downloading into your hard drive and putting it into the motherboard. Like, I like that. I want to keep that with me. Oh, that was so new age. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I wouldn't think like that because you know you'd I be can, like, oh, let's write it. I can barely let's remember write it on a piece how to of use paper a computer and put it in anymore. a box and keep it in the special. Box. I still ask you how to save a picture on my oh. smartphone, but and that makes my phone kind of a dumb phone, doesn't it? <laughs> oh well, <laughs> no, that's just the the difference in generation, I guess. But. Yeah. Well, we could just kind of go on about this forever, couldn't we? Yeah, we could. But, yeah, she found her path on her own and taught me, and I've, you know, what's the word I'm trying to find? I've expanded my knowledge in other fields, too, with, like, Buddhism and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, I love Buddhism, too. It's beautiful. I have a giant Buddha. Even Hinduism is... Oh, I love Hinduism. Beautiful. I love it all. Spirituality, too. Like, it's, it's all beautiful. It's all beautiful. And I like beautiful things. So. Like a sussex whale. You're beautiful. Except your eyes are gross. But, yeah. That's kind of just how it is. Mommy's kind of different. And I guess, because she's seen all the things that... My mom has seen everything that we've kind of had to go through. And... Well, she had to go through some of her own stuff, too. Yeah. But she um, she likes it, but she's, you know. She's more of a... I think of the, what everybody what's has. Not, no, that's no. Not what it is, is you get caught up in the mundane world. She's very nice. Everybody gets caught up in the mundane world, and it, and it dulls your spiritual magical world, you know. It, you have to really make time for it and put energy into it, because... The mundane world wants to take over. Yeah. You have to discipline yourself. Yeah. That's why I'm happy that we don't live in like a cul-de-sac or next to so many people because 
Yeah, we belong in the woods. Yeah, we belong in the woods. We're away going, from everybody. Away from everybody. So we don't feel their feelings and they don't bother us. Yeah. And, and we, we can have our own little world. Like, this is Ashley Dreams right here. Like, we live in Ashley and Sarah. And yeah, if we want to go outside and... and uh, we can run run act naked around if we wanted to. Ew. <laughs> That's something I wouldn't do. I'd make someone go blind. <laughs> but some people do the sky clad thing. I, and that's fine. I don't care. You know, it's like a human body. What's the big deal? It's just that when you're fat, it's, <laughs> it's not fun to look at it. And I wouldn't ever think of doing that. But I love my roby kind of things. And anyhow, flowy dresses and skirts. I love that. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about clothing so well that's all part of the craft though i mean clothing is a big part of it mm -hmm. i mean yes we dress a little differently and i, I think very different. a lot of pagan people that are going to watch this. i got an award in school for dressing like a weirdo not, not weirdo for thinking outside the box thinking which i think is the most greatest thing ever i was so proud but literally of that. i was in no art class i was you know most people didn't really pay attention to my words or anything that I wrote in my projects, at least I thought. But I wore some pretty full shit when I oh, was in see, school. people were paying attention to you. You didn't think they were paying attention to you. I didn't think you, they were paying attention to But they were because they were. you got that award. I thought it was an amazing award to get. Who wouldn't want to get an award for thinking outside the box yeah. and daring to be your own person? I mean, there were times where people thought that I was a teacher. I'm like, no, I'm a student. And then other times they'd be like, okay, did you just step out of Woodstock? Like, what's going yeah. on here? Like, I, I did whatever the freaking frack I wanted to when it well, came to my clothes. Personally, I don't know if everybody feels like this, but I always feel like I've never really left the hippie era. No. <laughs> No, I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't, I don't think care. I ever That's my will either. Zone, Mommy, my mom always makes fun of me sometimes with the things I wear, but it's like, uh, I like it. Dare to be an individual. That's probably the best advice I could give anybody. You know, be your own spiritual fingerprint. Do what you feel is right in your heart, and you can't go wrong. Yep. Do you, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys for watching this week's first youtube pagan challenge um can't wait to see what people say if you like it or not because it's fun to do i kind of liked it yeah this is Daniel's first time like on it. youtube so and the video is almost at 30 minutes like 30 31 32 yeah yeah that's probably about good length any longer gets a little People get bored and start looking for something else. To like that sketch and talking my ear off. No, yeah. just kidding. But thank you guys for joining in. Um, it means a lot. I hope you enjoyed. So stay tuned. I plan on making more videos since I have I'm back in Ohio now. So yeah. Stay have fun tuned. getting ready for Humboldt. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Coming. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.